Hi, I'm Andrew Lewin, founder of SpeakUpForBlue.com, a place where ocean conservation meets the world. Seafood is an important part of the human nutrition and has been for centuries. However, we have significantly reduced fish populations as we improve technology to catch seafood more efficiently. Research has shown that we are not only decreasing targeted species, but we are also decreasing other species who get caught up in the fishing gear. The process is known as bycatch and is a, pro and is a global problem. Kate McClellan, assistant scientist for the, from the Consortium of Wildlife Bycatch Reduction, is here to talk about bycatch and what we can do about it. Hi Kate, welcome to the program. Hi, thanks for having me. You bet, you bet. So, just to start off, can you give us uh, sort of a brief description of the Consortium for Wildlife Bycatch Reduction? Sure. So, the Consortium for Wildlife Bycatch Reduction, which I'll probably call the Bycatch Consortium for the okay. rest of this because it's it a, a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, it consists of um, fishing groups and scientists and engineers from the Blue Water Fishermen's Association, which is a commercial longlining group. Duke University, the Maine Lobstermen's Association, another commercial um, fishery group, the New England Aquarium, and the University of New Hampshire. And together we all support collaborative research between scientists and the fishing industry to develop um, and identify practical bycatch reduction solutions, mostly for endangered and threatened species. Um, we kind of focus in three primary areas. Uh, the first is understanding interactions between threatened non-target species and fishing operations. The second is uh, research and development of bycatch reduction techniques. And then the third is facilitating a global exchange of the information on bycatch reduction techniques through uh, meetings and information sessions and then through our website um, bycatch.org where we have a database of um, research that has been published on bycatch mitigation techniques that you can search by the species that you're interested in, the fishing technique, um, or the bycatch mitigation uh, technique to see how effective it's been in certain fisheries. So the consortium underlying philosophy is that a science industry partnership is really the best way to identify those effective and sustainable bycatch solutions. And we recognize that any change in fishing practices needs to be commercially viable and operationally practical. Um, and that we want to make sure that the best available science is used to identify um, reduction techniques that will benefit non-target species. And equally important, if a bycatch reduction technique is shown to reduce a bycatch species in a particular population, it shouldn't, be, um, it shouldn't pose a threat or an increased uh, threat to any other endangered species um, or be unsustainable for the uh, marine environment in general. That's kind of, those are our working guidelines. Okay, okay, great. That's a great description. Um, so before we really dive into the, into the, consor the bycatch consortium, uh, I just want to get a back and give our listeners uh, sort of a background on yourself. What were you doing? Oh, first of all, where are you, where are you originally from? Um, I grew up in New Jersey, um, but I've kind of lived all over the East Coast, and I've also spent some time living in the Caribbean. Oh wow! Okay, and so a lot of times on the on the on the coast, how does that did that have a huge impact on uh, sort of becoming a, uh, I guess a, a your your position is an assistant science, but your background is is a marine scientist. Is that correct? Yes, I um I've always been interested in in, in environmental issues, and that was kind of coupled with vacations at the beach my entire childhood and in, in college those kind of came together and I started focusing more on marine conservation. Okay and where did you live in the Caribbean? Um, I lived uh, for a little over a year on South Caicos and the Turks and Caicos Islands and I've also done work in St. Eustatius. Okay and, and how you know living you know, in the United States on the eastern seaboard um, you know a highly populated area uh, you know, lots going on in, in, in research and, and fishing and everything, and then you live in South Caicos uh, for just over a year. How does that, does that change your perspective on how uh, sort of fishing is, is conducted? I think that it, um, South Caicos is a very small community, which is actually mostly made up of, um, you know, small-scale fishermen. Um, they fish for conch, spiny lobster, and do some fin fish fishing. 
And it was definitely down there that I became more interested in um, species science. I, I worked with sea turtles and juvenile lemon sharks and uh, all around the coral reef ecosystem. But I also started becoming interested in how all of that science affected the fishermen, how it affected the management policies on such, such a small island where you can really see the effect of a government regulation on the fishermen, on the species in, in a small amount of time. Um, so I think being in, in those small communities uh, reinforced all of those things for me, even more than living on the East Coast did. Okay, okay. And then, uh, so your professional background, what, what did you study to do? Um, well, in, in undergrad, I was an environmental studies geology major, and um, I actually worked on a farm for a, a pretty long amount of time, but then shifted over to marine science and conservation. And after I, I spent the year in South Caicos working at the School for Field Studies, um, doing field work there, I decided to go back and get a master's degree. And because of my interest in, in science and policy and management, I decided to go to Duke University's Nicholas right. School for the Environment. Right, great school. Definitely a great school. Met a lot of people from there. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Uh, now, is this what were you doing your master's just before you you started working with the consortium? Um, I spent a year in between doing work for Duke University and the Nicholas Institute for Environmental Policy Solutions on coastal and marine spatial planning policy. So that um, is coming up through uh, kind of that policy is coming and being developed right now. And so we are working with industry groups, ocean industry groups, and environmental NGOs kind of trying to educate people about marine spatial planning, what it means, um, what the what the new policies could mean, and what they would like to see uh, happen um, as far as marine spatial planning goes. Okay. Now, with your background, um, you, you got quite a diverse background in terms of going from, uh, you know, field collection all the way to, um, you know, policy. Uh, how do you think that benefits you in terms of where you're where you're at right now in your career in terms of looking at policy and, and reducing, uh, you know, bycatch using policy initiatives and, and looking at gear and things like that? I think bycatch is a, a perfect problem for the overlap between science, management, policy, um, social science. It we need to understand the biological aspects of the species that we're concerned with. So we have to go back to the basic science of, you know, where are these animals, how, how are they migrating, where are they feeding, we need to know all of that basic information. But we also need to look at the uh, human side, the fishing side of things, and where are they fishing, what kind of tools do they use to fish, and then how do those things overlap. And also, the other part of that is is regulation. When there's a problem between the species, the endangered species, and the fishing groups, management comes in to try and develop regulations to prevent bycatch from happening. So it's all it's all yeah, connected. It's all connected. Okay, great. And that's I guess that's what a lot of science and management has become is that integrated sort of management, that marine spatial planning um, to help. This. So I guess it's would you consider you know bycatch as one of the major um, I guess issues that faces uh, marine spatial planning and looking at planning in the fishing community? Um, that's a good question. I think when we think about marine spatial planning, I think um, fishermen mostly see it as a, a way to close areas off mm -hmm. for other purposes and that bycatch doesn't play so much of a role in it, but uh, bycatch does cause time area closures, which is a, a type of you know marine spatial planning. So it, it is an aspect of it, but I don't think it's the first thing that people think of. I think right. they normally think of just you know you can fish here, you can't fish here because there's going to be a wind farm or right. you know oil rig or something like that. So right. Okay. Okay. Great. Uh, let's dive into bycatch as a problem. 